Good evening. This is probably one of the best known hats in the world. The hat of the Royal Canadian Mounted Policeman. Known the world over for their tenacity, determination, and discipline. But a Mountie is also a human being who has a human being's problem. In a moment, I'll be back to set the stage for just such a conflict in tonight's unusual play. Our central characters tonight are two Mounties and the men they have brought in. Our setting is the familiar one of the Canadian Northwest, but the story that follows is a most unusual one and a very exciting one. Therefore, it's with great pleasure that we present to you our very fine and suspenseful new play called A Line in the Snow. Some place where we can put him, ma'am. There's a bed back there. I wouldn't have seen much for the springs, but he's welcome to it. Thanks. It's all right, Frank. I can manage. Oh. Our car overturned in a snowdrift down the road, ma'am. You think you can put us up for the night? And where else would you be stopping? The nearest cabin is 14 miles from here. Thank you, ma'am. What did he do? What would you be arresting them for? For murder. My husband Murdoch's in town for supplies. You'll not be risking the trip back in this weather. I'll get the spare bunks ready. Thank you, ma'am. Assignment, they tell me. Field job. Like they were sending me out for a little hockey practice or something. You know how long we've been out of Regina after that guy? Ten whole days of playing hide-and-go-seek. Every one of them, 60 below, I'll swear. Once it gets below 20 or so, you'll not give a difference. 50 or 60, it's much the same. He, uh, what did he do? Hey, no, it's not the ninth already. Oh, for crying out loud, out of the whole bunch of eager beaver redcoats, they have to yank me from behind a sensible desk to go running around in the bushes with Margaret's here. Me that's gonna have a baby tomorrow. <laughs> well, uh, my wife, of course, I mean. February 10th, Doc said. You're sure it's not just the 8th? Nope. It's the 9th. Well, how do you like that? So just to really finish it off, they have to go and have a blizzard or something. Well, we'll never get out of here in time. I suppose you don't have a phone here? No, no, of course not. A murderer, he says. Aye. But what sort of a murderer that he hates him so? You should get him to tell you. Ten days. <laughs> you want to know how long Margus has been trailing him? Five years. All the way from down east and all the time since it happened. Me, he just picked up on the last lap in Regina. My first field trip. <laughs> yeah, Raggett in there is all his baby. Really? Is that five years he's been after him? Five years, two months, and eleven days, ma'am. Here. You'd be liking a cup of tea, would you not? McLeod's the name. Thanks, Mrs. McLeod. They'd suppose they'd soon drink coffee half the time. But for them as knows the comfort of a pot of tea. Did you ever have occasion to order yourself a cup of tea on the American side? <laughs> I've been staying that. <laughs> Now then, what happened? Who did that blackguard kill? If you don't mind, Mrs. McCloud. You see, ma'am, it was his own sister. Oh, his only sister, no doubt. No, but she was the youngest. Only 19 years old at the time. Oh, it must have been a 
terrible thing. How did it happen? She worked in a dry goods store, St. John's, New Brunswick, down the rough end of the town. She was just getting ready to close the shop, he told me. She was a pretty kid, and, well, she had a date that night. Then she heard the tinkle of the service bell. This guy, Brackett, came in. She told him she was shutting up, but he didn't answer. Just stood there, staring at her. He'd been hanging around the place for several nights, so he knew she'd be alone. That's the type he was. Got a record, it turned out, too. She wanted to get away early to keep that date. But he wouldn't take no for an answer. No, sir. Put his dirty pores on her. She kept her head and told him to clear off. She said she was busy. Turned her back on him, hoping he'd go. At first, she thought he had gone. Then she saw him still there. She tried not to let him see that she was worried. She tried to reason with him. And she got scared. a ghastly tale. One you could scarce believe in. Except that she told him herself just before she died. <laughs> He's asking for food. All right. Let we'll him have something then. If it's all right by you, Mrs. McLeod. This rabbit stew should have boiled enough still. On the back of the stove there. Small wonder you tracked him down so ruthlessly. If it had taken me a lifetime, I'd have found him. Ever since that first night when he slunk out of St. John, he's kept on the run. He's used a dozen different names and been as slippery as an eel. I ought to know. I've covered all his tracks. Covered them, lost them, picked them up again. And always just too late. Until this last time. And this last time? You made a mistake, man. Eventually, they always do, you know. You tried to sneak over the American border, wounded one of the guards. That was the clue I needed to pick up his trail again. your right hand. Oh, okay, big guy. I suppose you start shooting your dumb rookie here. Because if you don't, I will. First sign you don't cooperate. Warren. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what I could have been thinking about. That's all right, Frank. That's right, kid. Shut up. Hey, you. Margie's here. wants you to get busy unlocking the other one. Isn't that right? Boy, Mountie. I'll do no such thing. Unlock him, Mrs. McLeod.
Warren. I don't know what to say. It's all my fault. It's nothing. Forget it. You're just a desk sitter. I'm one of those eager beaver redcoats, remember? Five years, two months, and 11 days. Now when the storm's over, we'll have to start all over again. Oh? Yeah, I guess so. If it takes five more years, or 10 or 50. That is the end of Act One of our play tonight. After a short message from our sponsor, we'll be back with Act Two. been standing there a long time. Why don't you take a rest? How does that look? Worse, if anything. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be getting myself dressed and making us a bite of breakfast. I hope it's a boy lad. Thank you, ma'am. mess that bracket made of the uh, window in there, huh? Nice mess, period. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Shut up, listen. What do you hear? Listen. Sounds like a shot. A shot? There. Now, what do you make of it? What do you listen? I think it's him. I know it's him. Well, what the heck's he doing firing? Signaling. He's lost out there. <laughs> the idiot. All night long, completely and utterly lost. Of course. Did you hear that? We heard it, all right. It's Brackett. Of course it's him. It had to be him. There never was a chance of his going anywhere but in a circle. One long, endless circle. Here. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? You're the safest step off the side of an ocean liner or go out there. Four hours up there. Four hours up in that blizzard. You monkeys will get your man all right. When the storm's over, when you dare venture out there. Aye, you'll have no need to hurry, but he's as good as dead already. Hello! Hello! Aye, frozen solid. Oh, has wheel be if you don't close that door? Well, if that isn't one for the book. Here am I, kicking myself around the block for letting him get away, and all the time I've done you the biggest favor yet, Margaret. Yeah. Well, isn't that the gospel truth, Mrs. McLeod? Oh, and he was so cocky with that gun in his hand. Will you listen to him now? Margaret, do you hear... What are you going to do? I'm going after him, of course. Now, wait a minute. Warren, are you nuts? I'm going out to bring him in. You mark my words. You get three feet away from this cabin, you'll not be able to find you'll be back. Will you listen to her, Warren? It's true. You go around in circles. Stow so it, will you? Don't you realize there's a human being out there calling for help? What do you expect me to do? Stand by and see him die like a dog? It's what he did, isn't it? He left your poor sister to die like a dog. He did that, ma'am. But I'm not Brackett. Don't you two understand? You can't let the words come. Why not? He's a murderer, isn't he? Why break your neck to get him back? Did you ever stop to think who the next lousy crook will be? To get some slick lawyer? To get him off with double talk? 
Since you get it into that thick head of yours, letting him die out there is the only way to be sure he will die. I'm coming! Oh, you are, are you? And which way do you think you're going, Gray? You think that voice comes from the west, do you? It was east! No, it's no use. It's the slow, confusing sound. You'll be deceived every time. McLeod, we've got a big coil of heavy rope. A big coil of... with no rope here. Well, fine cord, whatever you got. That's for you, you can save your eulogies until after Black and Slide and Sentence. What are you going to do? It's simple enough. I'll carry a heavy coil of rope with me and tie one end down there. And head out. That way I won't get lost. Well, it might work if you get a long enough rope. We've no rope at all, and this is all the strength. Well, we've got to get something. I've got it. Here it is, the very thing. Murdoch's fishing rod. How long do you think this line is, Mrs. McClure? How long? 200, 300 feet, maybe. Murdoch's forever mending it. Could no. be it's no more than 75 feet. Never mind about that. Now, this is an order. Hold that and pay it out slowly as I go. Colonel, is not, I tell you. Margus, will you look at this thing? It's not made of steel, you know. It's just a fishing line. Now, never mind about that. Get your coat on. Now remember, you've got a lifeline in your hands, his and mine.
him, Paul. I told him. I told him I wasn't made of steel. I've no doubt he knew that. Just hold it steady. Don't pull on it. There's just a chance he may have got caught up on something. If Morgan stays put, it may lead me to him. Here. You've no hat nor gloves. Make it back. Here. Here your one. I'll follow. You can find him? Yeah. I tried packing him. He broke the line on me. He's at the other end of this, just in case. The big lug weighs a good 190 pounds. Maybe 188. Okay, Sergeant. Frank, take these. You'll need them. Thanks. Born. Yeah. See, that coffee's hot when I bring our prisoner back. You bet, fella. back again next week because we're going to try and give you a very out of the ordinary play. Till then, good night and thank you all very much.